So let's move on to policy and rules. Um, on the 20th of March, the PRA published your final rules for Solvency II. What's changed since you issued the consultation? Well, not a lot has changed because it's a maximum harmonising directive. The, our freedom to change is not great. But what we have done is used our discretion to try and make things simpler where we can. And we've done that in a couple of places, particularly around simplifying some of the national reporting templates, which the firms had found a little bit complicated. And also we have managed to simplify some of the calculation of transitions where the Treasury have helped us to um, set out the direction of how we should do that on a, on a pillar two basis, which I think the firms will find beneficial. Okay, so simplification in two core areas, but presumably this is something you want boards to read and focus on. Absolutely, yes. The, the rules are the rules for solvency too, so um, that's what needs to be applied to. Good. We often hear this criticism that you know, solvency two is just overly expensive, a huge amount of extra bureaucracy and red tape. What, what can you say to board members about the extent to which the PRA is being proportionate in its approach to implementing Solvency II? Well, proportionate is very much our watchword. It, there's no denying Solvency II is expensive. I think there's no denying that in this phase there's quite a lot of bureaucracy and documentation that we both have to get through. Uh, that applies equally to us as it does to the firm, so they have all our sympathy on this. As I say, where we can use our discretion, we will use that to make things simpler in the, in the rules um, and also to make sure the processes themselves are as simple as possible. Uh, for example, we know some firms want to be able to make uh, applications for matching adjustment and volatility adjustment simultaneously, yes. so they, they know joint results. We will set up our processes if we're asked to do that so they get a, a joint consideration and a single response. Uh, and that's in our interest as well as the firms to make these processes of approval uh, as, as, as sweet as we can be given the underlying need to, to meet the directive's requirements. And how big a challenge has it been for the PRA to get ready for this challenge? Because it's a massive amount of work in one go. We think we're in a reasonably good place. We've got everything done that we expected to do by this stage. Everything's come out on time. What we really need to do now is get the firms over the line. That's our big focus going forward for the rest of this year. Okay. Now, obviously, a key aspect in that, as a, uh, and throughout the Solvency II discussion, has been the volatility adjustment, the VA. Uh, the PRA has just released a draft supervisory statement for firms on the supervisory approval processes for the volatility adjustment. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, the, it was up to national discretion as to whether or not to have a pre-approval process, and the Treasury have agreed to give the PRA that. We think that's very much in the interest of firms, although they may not immediately appreciate that. But the reason is because it gives them absolute certainty and clarity that they will get the volatility adjustment. And our commitment is if they meet the terms and standards, they will get it as laid out in the directive. So that should be their expectation. We will try and make that process as smooth as possible. And barring unforeseen uh, issues or, or something else pressing, they will get their answers on the volatility adjustment within six weeks of, of applying. So we intend to make that process as smooth as possible. And firms will know up front that they've got the volatility adjustment where they need it and can take that forward. So there is a process, although there's a process that's been put in place, it's been a question of national discretion. You're saying the advantage of that is it provides certainty for firms. Yeah. The alternative would be we, we'd have to use our supervisory judgment ex post once the volatility adjustment had been put in place. And that would have been very awkward for both the firms and ourselves because the firms would have developed it and put it in place and then we might have to come along and say, no, you're not meeting the, the standards. So getting it in up front um, gives the firms the certainty uh, that they need that they've got it. Okay. So in terms of the, the production of rules and policy, uh, we've had these uh, two big uh, publications from you. What happens next? What happens after here? Uh, well, there's a few more details um, to finalise, but the key thing next is really for the firms to get their applications into good order. We've been giving feedback now almost continuously uh, to the firms over the last year or so. Uh, they need to take that feedback on board. Um, mm. They need to produce good quality documentation. We're not looking to weigh the documentation. Uh, we actually want succinct, high quality documentation in the uh, applications, and then that will make our job a lot easier. We want the firms to get the approvals that they're seeking, uh, so we're not on the other side of the fence. However, we do have a formal duty to apply the standards and tests in the directive, and that's what we must do. Um, but if we can give the firms any help that we can to get to that point, that's what we really want to do. Another key part of Solvency 2 and another responsibility for the board are obviously the filing of the regulatory returns and the key information in them. 
Uh, how ready do you think firms are and geared up to prepare for the, the different sorts of returns they're going to have to do under Solvency 2? We think we're in pretty good shape. We've had an industry working group looking at this and we've been able to run some tests for firms to check out that the processes all work. Uh, we'll have all of the IT in place for them to be able to do that. Uh, and so that's one area where we don't have any great concerns at the moment and we think the industry is reasonably well placed. Okay. So we started by saying this is a historic process, a huge task for both the industry and the, the PRA. Closing thoughts, just how ready are we? Uh, we think we're on track. There's a lot to do still, particularly for individual firms who are still trying to complete their modelling work. Um, those on the standard formula should have it a bit easier. But I say 19 different types of approval that firms can apply for. Uh, that's a lot. Um, so we mustn't lose any momentum. But I think we're about as on track as I would have expected us to be. Uh, but we just need to keep it going now and make sure we land this uh, collectively by 1st of January 2016. Mm. And your final message for any non-executive directors who still have any concerns or uncertainty about what they should be doing or how they should be helping their firm get the approvals? Um, make sure you've had your conversations with your supervisor. Remember it's a team effort. Remember it, what your role in this overall process is uh, and grasp the opportunity. This is the biggest change in the regulatory regime for a generation. Um, it will drive a better industry, a level playing field across Europe uh, and we should all feel our place in delivering that. Paul Fisher, Executive Director at the PRA, thank you very much. Thank you.